My name is Donna Whiting, and I'm proudly representing Providence Community Library. Um, I'm representing all, all of our nine libraries, but I'm here at Mount Pleasant, and we are so grateful that you could join us um, today, tonight. I am, it's such an honor to, um, to welcome Len Cabral. Len Cabral, I consider a friend, even though he is an internationally known storyteller, nationally, locally, he's acclaimed the world over and he is spending his time on Zoom with us tonight. Len is, um, Len is I don't know, he, he has so many wonderful things happening and that have, have happened. He uh, used to run this cool club called The Roots and we used to have Strictly Jazz and Jazz Blues Jam. And I was so grateful to be a volunteer hostess, photographer, and Len's love of music. Everybody who was anyone came down, even if you weren't anyone, you could still come down to the roots. But his love is storytelling. He loves a good animal story. He loves, he loves good fables. He's been entertaining at libraries, festivals, museums since 1976, I believe, Len. Is that good? Yes. Is that a good date? That's a good date. And he is also a friend to the libraries, especially at Mount Pleasant. I wish we could have him here live tonight, but Mr. COVID-19 tells us that we have to, you know, keep a social distance, wear masks, wash our hands. So we are still trying to present programming in the best way we can. And we hope you will join us tonight. And Lynn, thank you so much. He's also an author. Um, so he has books, so you can check that out too. Like I said, he, he's everything. So I'm not even sure I'm doing him justice, but I'm doing it the best way I can. So thank you, Lynn, and welcome to Providence yeah. Community Library on behalf of Fundafest, I believe, 23. Yeah. This is 23 yeah. years? Under 73, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome very much. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be part of this. I'm so glad to see you and the rest of the folks that work at the wonderful libraries. The community library system in Providence is just spot on. So I'm gonna share some stories and um, I wanna share a story. I wanna show you something. This is a gourd and in Africa and South America in other parts of the world, they use this, it's like a, uh, almost equivalent to a pumpkin, but it's carved out. And as you can see, this one is carved out and it has a cover. And they carry water in it and they make bowls with it to eat out of. They make utensils with it to eat with. And it grows and they just use it uh, for many things. So I'm going to use it in the story. This is a story, this is an Anansi story. Now Anansi, many of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, he's in many, many African and West Indian folk tales. And he's a trickster. And if you go to a library, all these libraries have wonderful stories about Anansi, the trickster. And sometimes he's a hero. He does good things. And people say, that's the way to be Anansi. But sometimes Anansi's not so nice. Sometimes Anansi, if he doesn't get his way, he pouts. I won't play. Hmm. Or sometimes he's greedy and sometimes he's selfish. Well, here's a story about Anansi and common sense. Now, you know what common sense is. Common sense is because you boys and girls and you adults know many, many things. And for example, you already know that you should never go running across the street without looking, right? You know that you should, shouldn't play with matches. You know that you shouldn't uh, go out on thin ice. Uh, shouldn't run with scissors. Um, you know you should always wash your hands. Matter of fact, talking about washing hands, if you can't remember the last time you wash your hands, it's time to wash your hands. And you should, you know, you should wear a mask. Well, that's common sense. Think that we know. We know that. Wear a seatbelt. You know that. Well, here's a story. One morning, Anansi woke up and said, I have an idea. If I can get all the common sense in the world, I will be very wealthy. 
For when everyone needs advice, they'll have to ask me, and I will charge them. I will charge them plenty. That's what I will do. So Nanji went out and he started collecting common sense. You get common sense from a village over there and a village over there. You get common sense from a village back there, back there, over there, and right there, and right there. When Anandji thought he had all the common sense in the world, he stuffed it into a gourd. And then he put a cover on that gourd. And he said, now I will be very wealthy. But whenever anyone needs advice, they'll have to ask me and I will charge them. I will charge them plenty because I have all the common sense in this gourd. But someone may try to take it from me. I should hide it. But where should I hide it? I hide it up in this tree. So Anansi picked up that gourd and placed it on his belly. And he got some rope and he tied some rope around that gourd and tied it to his belly. And Anansi started to climb the tree. But as he climbed that tree, it was difficult climbing that tree. And he soon lost his gripping. And he went, boom. But he climbed the tree again. But again, he lost his grip. And he went, boom. Again, boom. Well, finally, Anandi was climbing that tree. And he was almost to the top of that tree when a little girl walked by and said, yo, Anansi, if you want to put that basket up in the tree, you should tie it to your back. Anansi was so surprised to hear that big piece of common sense coming from that little girl's mouth that Anansi dropped the gourd. It landed on the ground right on a rock. It broke wide open. The common sense bounced out of the gourd up into the air and the wind came by and the wind went and blew that common sense all around the world. And everybody in the world looked up and they saw that common sense floating by and they all reached up very lightly. And they grabbed some of that common sense and they put it in their heads. Go ahead, get some. Put it in your head, get it. Put it in your head. And that's how common sense got where it is. But you see, Nobody caught all the common sense. Each of us caught some of that common sense. That's why we have to share the things that we know with the things our friends know. Because nobody knows everything. Everybody knows that. That's just common sense. Yes, it is. And that's a story about common sense. And thank you. Now, sometimes, you know, <laughs> what we think people is, uh, for some people, common sense isn't what it is. You know, sometimes you see somebody do something pretty silly and you go, isn't that common sense? But mm, you never know, you never know. So uh, here's another story about uh, Anansi. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you the story. It's from this book, my book, How the Rabbit Lost Its Tail. And I didn't do the wonderful illustrations. A friend of mine, Kate DiCabello, did the uh, illustrations. She went to Rhode Island School of Design and she did some wonderful paintings of this book. I was so pleased to work with her. But anyway, the story, the book is called how the rabbit lost its tail. It goes like this. Long ago, the dog and the rabbit were best of friends. They were always together. They were best of friends. They'd have breakfast together, lunch together, supper together, best of friends. One morning, they were having breakfast together when Anansi came by. Now, Anansi was rather jealous of the friendship between the dog and the rabbit. Nobody here is jealous, right? Oh, good, good, good. Anansi was jealous. He wanted to start some trouble between these two friends. 
the dog saw Anansi first. The dog said, Anansi, what are you doing up so early? You never get up before 12 o'clock. <laughs> Anansi said, I wanted to get up early this morning, you see, for there's a boat leaving and the boat is going to the magical island. <gasps> the magical island? I've always wanted to go to the magical island. Well, you can't go. Why not? You don't have any horns. The only animals allowed on the boat are animals with horns. They can't go. But I want to go on the boat. I want to go on the boat. I want to go on the boat, said the dog. You can't go. You don't have any horns. The dog looked at the rabbit and said, rabbit, I want to go on the boat. I want to go on the boat. I want to go on the boat. Whoa. The rabbit said, you heard what Anansi said. We don't have any horns. We can't get on that boat. Anansi knew he had planted the seeds of trouble. So Nandi went back into the woods to his home. The dog said, but I want to go on the boat. The rabbit said, let me think, let me, ooh, ooh, I have an idea. Let's go in the woods. We'll each get two long sticks and a couple of leaves. We'll poke the sticks up through the holes in the leaves. We'll get some vines and we'll tie the sticks off. We'll make headpieces like bonnets. And once we place them on our heads, those sticks, they'll be poking up in the air like that. It'll make us look just as if we have horns. And that's just what they did. They both went into the woods. They each found two long sticks. They got a couple of leaves. They poked the sticks up through the holes in the leaves. They got some vines and they tied the sticks off. They made headpieces like bonnets. But you see, the headpieces they made were rather heavy and they had to help one another place them on each other's heads. So the dog said, rabbit, you help me put mine on, I'll help you. And the rabbit agreed. He picked up the dog's headpiece and he placed it on the dog's head. The dog took those vines. He tied a nice knot under his chin. Then the dog walked over to the water to look at his reflection. And with those sticks poking up in there like that, it made him look just as if he had horns. He looked at his reflection in the water. The dog said, I look nice, I look nice, I look nice. The rabbit said, yeah, you look nice. Now help me put mine on. Wait a minute, I'm looking at myself. I look nice, I look nice, I look nice. Will you help me? Well, just then. Hmm. Hmm. The boat started to leave. The dog said, Whoop, I gotta go, goodbye. And off he went. The rabbit said, but wait, but wait, but wait for me. And the dog ran and he got right in line with all those animals with horns and that dog got right on that boat. Look at all the animals getting on. Well, I know you can see those animals. There was a unicorn, giraffe, a wildebeest, the yak, the goat, the buffalo, the cow, the antelope. Oh, yeah, yeah. The rhinoceros, yes, yes. Dude, the giraffe, oh, yeah. All those, the moose, oh, the caribou, oh. All those animals with horns, they're getting right on that boat. And that dog with his phony horns, he got on that boat too. The rabbit was angry. And the boat started to sail away. Well, the rabbit knows a little hill next to the water. He quickly ran over to that hill. And as that boat was sailing by, the rabbit called out. He said, Captain, oh, Captain, one of your passengers has no horns. The dog went over to the captain and said, Captain, you hear what he said? He said, turn the boat to the left, to the left. The captain, he turned that boat to the left to the left, the rabbit, he ran over to the next hill. Captain, oh, captain, one of your passengers has no horns. And once again, the dog went over to the captain, said, captain, hear what he said? He said, turn the boat to the right, to the right. And the captain, he turned that boat to the right, to the right. The rabbit looked, there's only one hill left. He ran to the top of that hill and he called out in a mighty voice, and I need your help. Ready? 
Captain, oh, Captain, one of your passengers has no horn. And the wind took those words across the water, over the stern of that boat, right to the captain's ears. And the captain said, one of my passengers has no horns. Trim the sail, drop the anchor, stop the boat and line up. And all those animals lined up. And that captain, he walked over to the cow and the moose and the buffalo and the yak and the unicorn and the gazelle. And he was getting closer and closer to the dog. The dog knew he was going to get caught. The dog quickly jumped over the side of that boat and started doing the doggy paddle. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The rabbit looks, he saw the redness in the dog's eyes. That rabbit, he lit on out. Shoo! And as he ran, his long tail flopped, and he ran, and his long tail flopped, and the dog was doing the doggy battle, whoosh, 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 until he got to the sandy beach where he shook himself dry and let out after that rabbit. Now the rabbit ran, his long tail flopped, and the dog was gaining. And the rabbit ran, his long tail flopped, the dog was gaining and gaining. Finally, the rabbit reached the safety of its home. And he jumped down that rabbit hole, but he didn't have enough time to pull down that long, bushy, beautiful, fluffy tail. And the dog came right up behind him and went, Aum! and bit the rabbit's tail right off. And ever since that day, rabbits have short little tails and dogs are always chasing them. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I bet you, like me, you probably have seen a lot of rabbits around this past year. I've, I've never seen so many rabbits in the neighborhood. Uh, from last spring all summer long. And even now I see rabbits and in the morning when there's a little snow on the ground, I can see the rabbit tracks. There's two, there's like three little mocks and those are rabbit tracks. You see them in the snow in the early in the morning sometimes. And uh, yeah, I like to see them run around. So a lot of, I, love, I have a lot of cats in my neighborhood too. And there's also coyotes from time to time. And of course, there's always a lot of squirrels around. Oh yeah, a lot of squirrels all the time. I saw rabbit tracks. You saw rabbit tracks? Yeah. And my dog, he never chased a rabbit. Oh, you got a good dog. <laughs> That's a good dog. He was almost the same size as a rabbit. <laughs> oh, he would chase lots of squirrels <laughs> right up to that tree and then be oh. scratching at the tree. Does he chase he chases squirrels? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and they were half his size. Oh, that's why squirrels are happy that dogs can't climb trees. There wouldn't be that many squirrels if dogs could climb trees. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got something I want to show you. I showed you a gourd, and I showed you this. You know what this is? Who can tell me what this is? Do you know what this is? You can unmute it. A coconut, that's right, it's a coconut. And you know the coconuts grow in very warm places. And they grow on trees that are very tall, like telephone poles. And they go way up the top of those trees. This is a coconut. But can you see this part of the coconut? Does it look like a face? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And face well, is surprise. Yeah, They're like a surprise face, yeah. Or, or the scream. Ah! Or boo. What animal's face? Some of you can can unmute for a minute and you can answer. You can tell me what what sort of animal's face does that coconut look like to you? I look at it sometimes. It I think looks like it a looks like um, a cow. An owl, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. It does look like an owl. Woo, woo, 
Especially when you move it like that. Yeah. And it I also, think it looks like a sloth. A sloth. Have yeah. heads, Upside sloth down. Sloths have heads like that. And yeah, that's right. A basically that oh, color. Yeah. Uh, or a hedgehog. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like that. Um, it, you know, it could be, look, it looks like a snake, maybe. All right. We move it like that. It looks like lots of animals. And sometimes it looks like a monkey's face, too. Yeah. Here comes the story. Over on the continent of Africa, there's a river. It's the longest river in the world. It's called the Nile River. And it goes for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And then a smaller river runs off that one and it forms a sandy bottom pond. And in that pond live some turtles. And then there's a sandy beach. And then there's a very tall tree with branches on the very top. And up in that tree live a family of monkeys. And then there's the forest. But over there, they don't call it the forest. They call it the bush. And on the other side of the bush is a village. And in the village live some hunters. Now, every morning, those turtles, they would swim out the water. And when they swam, they swim like this. Can you help me swim? Until they got to the sandy beach where they would wobble, 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 until they found a nice sunny spot in the sand, they'd lay down and go to sleep. Just about that time, the hunters would wake up. They lived in the village. Those hunters, they would walk out of the village, down a dirt road, into the bush, where they take out their long knives and they'd go chop, 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 chop. They were cutting a path through the bush because they were hunting the turtles. And by the time the turtles heard them coming, the turtles couldn't get back into the water where they'd be safe because turtles move so slowly. And the hunters would catch the turtles every day. Well, up in that tall tree, there was a family of monkeys, a little girl monkey, just about as old as some of you girls in there. And her brother, just about as old as some of you boys here. She said to her brother, she said, you know, Every day we're, we're up in this tree and every day we see the turtles swim out the water, wobble across the sand and fall asleep in the sun. And then we hear the hunters coming long before the turtles do. And by the time the turtles hear the hunters, they can't get back into the water where they would be safe because turtles move so slowly. Maybe since we can see and hear the hunters long before the turtles, we should warn them. And that would give them enough time to get back into the water. Her brother thought that was a great idea. They asked their parents, their parents agreed. The next morning, those turtles, they swam out the water. Swim with me. They get onto that sandy beach where they wobble, 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 until they found a nice sunny spot in the sand. They lay down, they went to sleep. Just about that time, the hunters woke up. They walked out of the village, down the dirt road, into the bush, where they took out their long knives and went chop, 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 chop. Well, the monkeys heard them coming. And the monkeys, how did they make the noises that monkeys make? How do monkeys sound? Woo, 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 just like that. Woo, woo. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, just like that. The turtles woke up. They started to wobble, 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 until they got to the water where they swam away. Well, the hunters got there and they said, gee, no turtles here today. Let's go back. When they got back to that village, their boss was angry. What? No turtles tomorrow. You fellas better get up real early. You better come back with some turtles. Well, the next morning, those turtles, they swam out the water. Until they got 
that sandy beach where they wobble, wobble, wobble. And they got, a, they got the sunny sand and they fell asleep. Just about that time, hunters woke up. They walked out of the village, down the dirt road, into the bush, took out their long knives and went chop, 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 chop. Well, the monkeys woke up and they started to make the noises that monkeys make. How do they sound? The turtles woke up. They started to wobble, wobble, wobble until they got to the water where they swam away. Well, the hunters got there and said, gee, no turtles here again today. Let's go back. Then one hunter looked. And what do you think he saw in the sand? A turtle? No, they were in the water. But what do you think he saw in the sand? The turtle tracks? Oh, yeah. He saw the turtle tracks. What do you think you heard up in the tree? The monkeys. The monkeys. And the hunter said to his partner, he said, hey, do you think maybe, do you think, uh, oh, never mind. No, what were you going to say? Oh, nothing. No, come on. Okay. Do you think those monkeys up in that tree are warning these turtles that they're in danger, that these animals are communicating, that they're helping one another? And his partner said, don't be silly. Animals don't talk to each other. Animals don't communicate. They don't help each other. That's silly. Come on, let's go back. When they get back to that village, their boss was fit to be tied. What? No turtles again today? Tomorrow, you're going to get up real early. Matter of fact, I'll get up early with you. I'll show you how to catch turtles. Well, the next morning, those turtles, they swam out the water. They get onto that sandy beach where they wobble, 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 until they found a nice sunny spot in the sand. They laid down, they went to sleep. Just about that time, the hunters woke up. Along with their boss, they walked down the dirt, out of the village, down the dirt road, the bush took out there and went chop, chop, chop. Well, the monkeys heard them coming and the monkeys started to make the noise that monkeys make. How do they sound? Let me hear it. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh. Ooh, ooh, uh, But, but, but the turtles were fast asleep. They did not hear the monkeys. The monkeys had to get a little louder. They woke up. They started to wobble, 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 wobble until they got to the water where they swam away. Well, the hunters got there and they said, see boss, we told you no turtles here. The boss looked. What do you think the boss saw in the sand? Turtle tracks. And what do you think you heard up in that tree? Monkeys. You guys, can't you tell that those monkeys up in that tree are warning these turtles that they're in danger, that these animals are communicating, these animals are helping one another? And the two hunters said, gee, boss, we didn't know animals talk to each other. We know animals communicate and help each other. <coughs> The boss said, see, that's what I'm talking about, common sense. You'd know these things if you spend more time in your, in your community libraries. Uh, now listen, tie a rope around that tree. They tied a rope around the tree. Now put a net on the ground. They put a net under the ground, uh, underneath the tree. Now shake that tree. And they shook that tree like this. And the monkeys fell out the tree, landed in the nets. They wrapped the monkeys up in the nets, threw the nets over their shoulders, and walked away. Now the turtles, they were in the water where they were safe, but they could see that happening. They felt real sad about that. And after a while, it was real quiet. Those turtles, they swam out the water. They get onto that sandy beach and they wobbled, wobbled, wobbled. They wobbled up to that tall tree with branches over at the very top. And they looked up at the tree 
and the monkeys were gone, the turtles were real sad about that. They had little turtle tears coming down their turtle cheeks. When all of a sudden, a voice came from that tree. The voice said, turtles, worry not. Because the monkeys were so brave and so helpful to all the animals in the forest, I'm going to bring forth a nut and I'm going to put the monkey's face on every nut I grow. And today we call that nut a coconut. Coconut. <laughs> That's right. And as you can see, it has the monkey's face on it. And they grow way up tall in the tree and they grow close together. And when the wind blows and the coconuts rub against each other, you know what it sounds like? Ooh, 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 ooh. And the next time you go to the produce market with your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa, you go where the fruits and the vegetables are and you see a coconut, you pick up a coconut and you look at it, right? And you will see that every coconut has the monkey's face on it. And if your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa buy that coconut and you take it home, you tell them about this, right? You let them do it. You just direct them. Tell them to take the coconut and place it on the counter with the face pointing toward the ceiling. And then you tell them to get a screwdriver. And you tell them to press down on one of these dots because one of these dots is very soft. It's called the mouth. The other two are very hard. So if they get a screwdriver and they go like this, and it doesn't go in, say, go to the next one. Go, mm. Let's say, go to the next one. Because they put it on the right one. As soon as they press down, it's going to go. And then you'll have a hole in it. And you could put a straw in it, a, a, a paper straw in it. And you can drink the coconut juice right out of the coconut. Or you can turn it upside down over a glass and gravity will pull the juice right out of the coconut. Oh, we have a science project going on. And it'll fill up a glass full of coconut juice. And then you can have some adult crack that coconut open for you. And there's a white part of the coconut. They call it the meat of the coconut. You can eat that part of it. Sometimes people make oil for their skin or for their hair, or they make oil to, uh, to cook with. Or they take, I like to take the white part of that coconut. I like to grate it up, get some shrimp, throw some shrimp in it, and then throw it on the grill. Woo! I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. <laughs> and that's the story about the monkey, the turtle, and the coconut for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that story, oh, a long time ago in a book about uh, African art. And um, I think I was in, I was traveling. I think I was in Jamaica when I was reading that book and I came across that story. And that was probably 1976, 75, when I found that story in a book. A lot of my stories I find in books. My favorite place in the library is that 398.2 section, because that's where the folk tales are. <laughs> it's, 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 it used to be 890. Uh, what's that, 398.2? Yeah, that's right. I was wondering if anybody has any questions that uh, you'd like to ask me, uh, any adults or children have any questions, and then I'll, I'll share one more story if we have time. Have Okay. What, what, is, uh, what did the hunters do with the monkeys when they popped? Them? Oh, you know, I was thinking of that too. And I have a couple of ideas what they did with them. What, what do you think they did with them? I think they fed them to the whole town. Mm. I think they chopped them up and cooked them and fed them to the town. Well, maybe they did. I think maybe they, they took them to another part of the forest and, and let them loose. Or maybe they ended up in a zoo. Or maybe they end up in a school. <laughs> like you said. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. Any other questions? No. Um, I have a question. Okay. These questions are for adults too. How you doing? What's your, what's your favorite animal? Oh, my favorite animal. Oh, well, my favorite domestic animal is a toss up between a dog and a cat. Cause I, I had both of them for the longest. You mean a fox? No, a dog and a cat. The domestic animal, you know, it's an animal for a pet. Uh, my, um, yeah, people have foxes for pets. A fox is a pet? Ooh, I don't know yeah. about that. I've seen pictures. Yeah, well, maybe some people do. Yeah. Any other questions? When I have a uh, question. Yes, Donna. Yeah. How do you like telling stories via Zoom? Well, you know, I miss the the being in a room with a couple of hundred children and teachers and doing it live. I, I really miss that. But I've I've grown used to uh, telling stories over at, over Zoom um, because you know I can you know people can watch and they can comment and I can see them. It's a lot different. Uh, I have to I choose different stories than I would if I was live right. because I like to tell stories with a lot of participation and repetition and with Zoom the, my programs are a little shorter because of the attention span the, the engagement factor is different when doing a Zoom normally when I'm telling stories in a school my programs are 45 to 50 minutes it's sometimes a little longer mm -hmm. but with Zoom it t they tend to be about 25 to 30 minutes, 35 minutes on the longer side, mm -hmm. just because of the distance in it. Right. But, um, I'm thankful that we're able to do, you know, to use Zoom. I mean, if this happened back in the 90s, I don't know, before Zoom and before many of us had computers, I don't know what we'd be doing. True. So at least we're fortunate that we, we can see each other this way and stay in touch, and especially you know, the, the boys and girls who have grandparents who, who, who they haven't been able to see for a long time, they can, hopefully they can connect through Zoom. And I mean, they can pick up the phone and call too, but it's nice to be able to see your grandmother and see your grandpa. And, for, and it's, it's really nice for your grandpa and your grandma to see you right. in, in Zoom. So that, you know, we're thankful for that. Um, and uh, other than that, you know, one thing that I do miss is, you know, I, I rehearse a lot. I've, and I realized that I would rehearse a lot when I was driving, either home from, a, from an engagement or to an engagement. I'd be exercising my voice while I was driving and uh, stretching my voice and warming up. And then, and then driving home, I'd I think about the show and how I could improve the story or how a particular story went. And I could talk to myself because I'm alone in the car and I could sing, I could rehearse, work on a story as I'm driving. So if I'm working in Connecticut and I'm driving home and it takes two hours, I can work on stories. And I miss that because I'm not driving anywhere. So I have to really be conscious about exercising my voice, doing warm ups. Um, and I find it difficult sometimes. Uh, I like to, you know, uh, be alone uh, uh, when I'm rehearsing, and, and when I'm not, in, I'm not, you know, interfering with somebody with something else that's going on. Um, and so, uh, I miss that. I miss the being alone in the car driving. Uh, but you know, we find different ways. So I've been trying to write, and uh, I've been writing. I got a couple of poems running around in my head and I'm trying to uh, get them out and uh, uh, work on some poetry. And I'm always looking for stories to tell, you know, yeah. You've made the adjustment quite well. Well, thank you, thank you. Like I said earlier, you know, I, I miss I miss people, you know, um, cause you know, I, I, that's why I love the roots so much. Mm -hmm. Because I get to see people and laugh and greet people and, right. and watch people greet one another. The wonderful thing about Roots is whenever anybody walked in, there was always hugs for people. Right. People were right. glad to see each other. Mm -hmm. And it was like a family. And so I can't wait for us to be able to gather like that again. Yeah. And, and support 
live music. Music, right. You know, right. just to support live music. Yeah. One, one quick thing. I think you should write a poem about life on Zoom. <laughs> I can see you telling that at, yeah. a, at, a, at, a, um, at a jam. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that, sure. <laughs> that would be fun. I'll have a big laugh no matter what. Because <laughs> everybody's experienced it. Everybody's experiencing it, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Good, bad, and ugly. Yep, it certainly is, sure enough. Yeah. Well, I'd like to uh, finish up with one short story if we have time. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, Lee, I'm assuming he hasn't said no, so. Okay, I'm going to finish up with this one story here. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, uh, it, I guess this is about common sense, about not judging people too quickly and uh, finding out that, ooh, I assumed something and go, ooh, I shouldn't have assumed that. I, I should have uh, not been so judgmental. There was an elephant. And he was walking through the forest. Mm, 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 when all of a sudden he fell in a trap. Some hunters had made a deep hole in the ground and they covered it up and the elephant didn't see that hole. And he fell, boom, right into the hole. And it was deep and he couldn't get out. And he decided to and what elephants do, whatever noises elephants make, that's what he was doing. And it woke up all the monkeys because it was in a monkey forest. And the monkeys heard the elephant calling out for help. And the monkeys came over and looked down at the hole and saw the elephant down the hole. And the monkey said, oh, whoa, we'll help you. And the elephant said, you're too small to help. Go get the other elephants. They can pull me out of here. Help me, help me, go get some help. And the monkey said, we don't have time to do that because the hunters have heard you and they're going to be on their way soon. So you got to be quiet and we'll help get you out. You can't get me out. You can't get me out. Go get help. And the monkeys climbed up into the coconut trees and they started rolling coconuts and throwing coconuts down that hole. Throwing coconut after coconut, and rolling coconuts. And the elephant saw those coconuts coming down and they hit the elephant here and they hit the elephant there and they hit the elephant here. And the elephant said, you're trying to bury me. Hey, stop it, stop it, I thought you'd help me. And they kept rolling the coconuts down and they rolled off the elephant. The elephant kept stepping on the coconuts and the monkeys kept rolling more and more and more coconuts down in that hole and it bounced off the elephant and elephant stepped on the coconuts and more elephant, more coconuts came down and more coconuts came down and the elephant kept stepping on the coconuts and stepping on the coconuts and stepping on the coconuts. Before you know it, the elephant stepped right out the hole because all those coconuts filled up the hole and the elephant stepped on them and was able to climb right out the hole. And the elephant looked at the monkeys all around him and he said, wow, thank you so much. You saved me. And I, I thought you were doing me harm. I thought, first of all, I thought you were too small to help me. It shows that even small animals can help big animals, just like small people can help big people. And I thought you were doing me harm, but you were helping me. And at first I was mad at you. I thought you were doing me up, but you saved my life. Thank you, monkeys. And the elephant heard the hunters coming and the elephant ran off into the woods and the monkeys climbed the tree. And the men came and they looked and they said, the elephant, he, he, we thought we heard an elephant. I guess we didn't. And they saw all the coconuts down in the hole, but they didn't know that the monkeys Help the elephant. And that's a story about the monkeys and the coconut again. When on behalf of Providence Community Library, myself, Lee is our Lee Smith is our Zoom person here today. Mm -hmm. Judean Hamazada is um, our children's coordinator and all the people that have come. 
and the people that wanted to come. We thank you so much for your storytelling, your poetry, your humanity. One mm. thing about Len, he believes in building communities and um, he does that today by stories because I'm sure somebody will tell one of these stories, whether they see a coconut or thinking I can't help somebody or a rabbit with a short tail, they'll know. So mm -hmm. Len, look forward to seeing you this past COVID stuff. Yes. Uh, you take care of yourself, Donna, and thank, thank the staff and thank all my listening friends out there. So good to see you all. Nancy, nice to see you and uh, everybody else. Take care, of, take care of yourself, take care of each other, wash your hands, wear your mask, yes. and we'll get through this. Yes. Peace.